Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? I am super excited to share with you guys today this N8N workflow I built to basically uh, repurpose all my content across multiple platforms. Basically, the system is designed to take a video file, transcribe it, and then write social media captions, uh, you know, depending on what platform it's for. So it'll get a YouTube caption, Instagram caption, a Twitter caption, even a Pinterest title. All of these prompts will be written to the best practices of each of the specific platforms. The videos will post on a schedule that we set and I'll be using my own personal uh, tone of voice and brand guideline. And so basically what happens is it just takes one video from a Google Drive folder and it posts it to YouTube here. It posts it to uh, your Twitter account and it also posts it to Instagram. And so the problem that I was facing is I have this TikTok channel for a while. I've been growing it for about six months. I'm up to about 50,000 followers. I've had some videos do really well. This one has almost 2 million views. This one's at 1 million. Uh, this one down here, that's 400,000 over here. And so I wanted to be able to take the content that was performing well or all of the content and start using it on multiple platforms. But I didn't want to have to do all the work of like downloading each video, uploading it to each platform, writing a caption. It's just like a lot. Uh, and so what's really cool is that I was able to just download all of my uh, video files in one go. I had like 400 videos or something like that. I was able to just download all of the files uh, from TikTok and then upload them to Google Drive. Uh, so all the videos, I just downloaded them here. And there was a little bit of manual work involved just to get the system set up. Uh, because basically I found that N8N doesn't like to process videos that are over 100 megabytes. Uh, and also I wanted to create an audio file, an MP3 file, so that I could easily transcribe the video uh, with just like a super small, you know, one megabyte audio file rather than having to process the whole video. This worked a lot better. So there was a little bit of manual work up front uh, to basically convert the videos, uh, you know, extract the audio and kind of like compress them. I use Adobe Media Encoder to do that. There's definitely software that you can do so out there. Uh, and so basically, I just took all of the audio and video files, I gave them the same name, uh, and uploaded them here uh, to this Google Drive folder. And so at the end, after everything's processed, they all get renamed, and then they get moved to this posted folder with the name of the video. Uh, and again, the MP3 and the MP4 kind of stay together uh, as a little pair. here. So I recently started the school community, I'm up to 123 members. Uh, and I will leave a link in the description where you can join this. And as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm going to publish it here in the classroom. So all you have to do is download the N8N workflow. And once you're done, you can kind of come into N8N, you can click these three dots, you can import the file, Click open and basically everything's just going to pop into place. You'll connect your credentials and you'll be ready to go. So let me walk you through how this system works. I'm just going to zoom way, way in here. So basically this is all set to run on a trigger. Uh, and I basically have this set to run uh, twice a day at 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. And this is just this cron uh, expression, which I had literally never heard of. Uh, it's this format second minute, hour, day, month. And so this is 8 a.m. This is 1,700 hours military time, so it's 5 p.m., and then it's uh, every single day uh, of the week, every single week of the month, and every single month of the year. Uh, I asked ChatGPT how to come up with this formula. This is what it showed me. This has been working for me. So basically, after that, what happens is then now I'm going to search Google Drive uh, for the parent folder, which, again, is going to be this ready-to-post folder, and it's just going to grab uh, you know, the last modified video that's in here, the most recent one that I've uploaded. It's just going to grab a single video for me. I just set the limit to one down here. And so basically, I use this uh, query string. And again, I'll make sure this is available in the community. Basically, this is the parent folder. Uh, this is the ID of the parent folder. You can see the same thing up here with the folder. And it says, and the name contains .mp4. So basically, I'm just, I just want to search for the video files, not the audio files. After this is done, I'm using the platform Blotato to set all my API keys so that I can publish to every single platform all at once. This is a platform Blotato. It's started by Sabrina Romanov, who's one of the biggest AI influencers in the space. It's by far the best way that I've found to post your videos or repurpose your content everywhere. If you come into settings here, all you have to do is connect your social media accounts down here and basically just copy your account IDs. Uh, from this little section here, and then you'll have access to post to every single one of these platforms. It is by far the most streamlined way I've found to post to multiple platforms. This makes it really, really easy. So here, if we go in, you can see I've set all those IDs. I just copied them and pasted them in here one at a time. And then right here in this little node, this is where I'm inputting uh, the API key that comes specifically for Blotato. Uh, Blotato is a paid account. It's like $29 a month. I have found it is extremely worth it and makes this process, again, really, really simple. So from there, I'm using an HTTP request uh, using the post method to basically upload the video file 
to the Blotato account. Uh, and then I'm inputting the Blotato API key again from this previous node here. And then I'm just filling out the body content with this link to download the actual video file. And if I click into the expression here, you can see I'm just dragging and dropping the video ID. And so if we scroll down all the way down on this, you can see that right here is the ID. And if we just drag this, we can drop this in here. I don't need a second one, so I'm just going to delete it. But you can see here now that this dynamically inputs the ID for that specific video file. And so now we're every single time we're going to dynamically grab a video from Google Drive and upload it to Botato so it can post. Next, I'm going over to this get audio node. So in order to add this, I'm actually just using a search Google Drive node. And so if I come over here and I type Google and I go down into Google Drive, basically what I want to do is I want to search files and folders. So here I'm searching the files and folders. And again, I'm using this advanced search method. I'll execute these previous nodes again so that we can see the process. And let me just open this up here and you can see, again, I'm using this expression. So the parents equals, and that's the same folder ID that we had before and name equals. And then I'm using this expression to basically replace .mp4 with .mp3. So what this is doing is it's basically getting the file name and then now instead of searching for the video file, it's looking for the audio file. So you can see we're searching here and this is returning the name equals this dot MP3 instead of the MP4, because again, I want to get the audio so that I can transcribe it. After that, all I'm doing is I'm downloading the audio. Again, you can come into here, you can type in Google Drive, you can come down here and you can go to download a file. And so basically all that's doing is I'm just piping in the ID from the previous search node here. So basically what I'm going to do is this node is just going to download that. It's the same as kind of like downloading with an HTTP request. This just works a lot better if you're working inside of Google Drive. After that, I'm transcribing the audio using a ChatGPT whisper module. And if you just come in here and click plus, you can go into OpenAI. You can just go OpenAI. And if you scroll down here, you can go to uh, transcribe a recording here. And basically what this is going to do is that this is just going to take the audio file and it's going to create a transcription for it. So we can go ahead and we can click test step. And it's just going to process the audio and I can see blog posts are boring, but this AI tool will turn any blog post into an awesome infographic. You can use their URL, a PDF, or just type to it. Super cool. So this next step is optional, actually. Uh, this is where I've kind of created my own tone of voice or my own character. And I've been using Superbase to do this. You can do this inside of Airtable. Uh, you can really do this anywhere. You can kind of forgo this if you want. But basically, I have this character here. It has my name, has my age. It gives me a little bit of a backstory, uh, some information about my personality, my passions, my goals, my behavior, tasks, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and so what this is doing is basically this is just grabbing that information from the Superbase uh, table here. So it's pulling all of this in uh, so that I can use it in this code node. So basically here, we're just using this code node right here to run custom JavaScript. And what this code is doing is it's just kind of taking the information about my character and it's actually turning it into a usable prompt. Uh, and so you can see here that this says, uh, role, you are Duncan, a 36 year old with the backstory of, and then it gives a backstory, tells a little bit about my work history. Uh, it gives me how I talk with confident, insightful and clear with a touch of dry humor, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, this is how I want uh, my prompts to speak and kind of sound when I'm writing for the different platforms. Again, if you want to use this, this is up to you. Uh, you don't have to. My goal is always to teach you like concepts. So you basically understand the possibilities and what's out there. And then you can kind of adapt them to your needs. Uh, find the way that works best for you. Every single person is different. Everyone's goals are different. I just want to show you uh, how real powerful these systems can be. After we've created the character, I'm just going to rename this here because what this is doing is this is writing a short uh, YouTube title. So basically, this node is taking the character information and it's taking the transcription here. And it's going to kind of write a super short uh, title for YouTube shorts. And I'm basically going to use this across the board in all of my posts, as well as to rename the files at the end. So here you can see the system prompt it says you're an AI industry expert. Uh, creating attention grabbing YouTube shorts titles based on the content provided, create one title following these guidelines. And it has the formats requirement, which is maximum 40 characters, which is a strict limit, no hashtags in the title itself, it can include emojis, uh, has this title style. So like you shocking statements, I tried this and or curiosity gaps, the truth about or make bold claims, this changed everything, right? Like it's a YouTube world, it's a social media world, it's a little bit clickbaity. Uh, but I think, you know, uh, what did I say, don't hate the player, or hate the game or something like that. Uh, stupid quote. Anyway, uh, basically then tells a little bit about content strategy. Uh, and then I just said, don't output any quotes in your t title, just the title text and use a casual Spartan tone.
I found that if you output quotes, uh, you kind of run into issues down the line. And then literally all I'm doing is I'm just piping in the transcribed audio um, from the ChatGPT node down here into the actual prompt. And so if I go ahead and test this step, you can see that it's going to basically take the prompt. And this just says, turn blog posts into infographics fast. That's going to be the title for my YouTube short. And now basically here what's happening is this is just running down a list of every single one of these platforms. You can see this is a switch node and it's just going to say uh, if the text exists, just pass it to every single one of these routes. And basically, I always want to pass it to every route. I'm just doing this uh, to kind of keep it separate. It seems to create like a smoother process and visually it's, it's just nicer to look at. And so the next thing I'm doing is I'm actually going into Airtable and I could have done this in Superbase too, uh, but I had already had them kind of set up separately. So I just linked to Airtable here. And so what's happening here is if you come in here and you type Airtable, you can go to search records. I'm just going to delete this because that's what this is. And basically what I'm doing is I'm actually just getting uh, a writing prompt that I've already created. So this is actually pretty cool and powerful. Let me just test this step. It's going to output to everyone. And so if I can test this step, you can see here what's happening is it's basically going to search to get the prompt to how, for how to write a YouTube shorts description. And where these prompts are coming from is I have this social database hub. Again, I'll make this available in the community for you. And if you come in here, I basically have all these social media channels in this writing prompts tab and then a prompt for each one of them. So the YouTube shorts description, you're an AI industry expert creating SEO optimized YouTube shorts descriptions. And here's the length and here's SEO optimization and the content strategy and some examples. And I've basically gone ahead and done this for every single platform, right? So here are different rules for Twitter, right? This needs maximum 240 characters, right? And some different content rules. And so why this is really powerful and clients love this is that they can adjust and adapt these prompts to whatever suits your needs. And this is dynamic, right? So anytime you come in here and change this, the N8N workflow will recognize those changes the next time it goes to run the system and it'll uh, adapt accordingly. And so from there, basically I'm getting the prompt and I'm coming in here. And if we test the step, now I'm just going to write a description for the YouTube channel. You can see transform boring blog posts into stunning infographics with infography.in. Just paste your link, choose your ratio, and watch the magic unfold in 30 seconds. So I just have a couple prompts here. Uh, I basically have a system prompt and a user prompt. And so the system prompt basically is the role. And this is coming, again, out of that code block. Remember where it generated basically my personal character. And here's the role that it's playing. And then the task is coming from uh, the air table with has the writing prompt. So it just has the role, which is me. And the task is that uh, writing prompt. You're an AI industry expert creating SEO optimized YouTube short descriptions. And then all I'm doing again is I'm just feeding in the transcribed audio uh, again so it knows what the content is. And this is really the same uh, for every single one of these, right? It's getting the prompt here. It's getting the Instagram prompt. It's getting the Twitter prompt. It's getting the Pinterest prompt. And then here instead, it's actually going to uh, you know, write for Instagram uh, based off of, um, you know, the writing prompt that we have set inside of Airtable. If we come in here, you can see that now the task is different, right? You're an AI industry expert creating optimized Instagram captions. And then it has kind of like a different format and content rules. So this is just going to go down the line and it's going to do these one at a time. And then I'm just posting this back uh, to Blotato. Uh, using this post method, uh, Sabrina has tons of documentation on the channel about how to do this. Uh, and then here's a little JSON and it includes uh, the YouTube title down here uh, and the description for it. And so down here, I'm just piping in my API key. Here's the JSON. It's going to get the YouTube title. Let me pop this open here, um, which is coming from the YouTube title node that we just kind of ran. Uh, here's the text that's coming from the YouTube description. And then here's the media URLs that's coming from that uh, Blotato node earlier in the flow where we basically uploaded this to Blotato to get ready. Uh, as well as the count ID. So, you know, there's tons of documentation of how to set this up and you can see the result here, right? Here's the title, here's all that text we created, uh, and then here's the media URL and my account ID so that it knows where to properly post to. And then it's just going to go down every single one of these routes, kind of writing and posting to each one of these platforms. And then it's going to combine all of these just into one single output. I'm using uh, the update a file node inside of Google Drive to update the video and the audio file. And then I'm, and so you can see how this works. It's getting the video ID from the beginning of the flow. It's taking the YouTube title and it's changing the name and then it's keeping .mp4 at the end for the, for the video. And this is basically the same node. You can just duplicate them. And it's, this is just updating uh, to .mp3 here. And instead of uh, grabbing the video, I'm grabbing the audio ID. 
And then at the end, I'm just moving the video and I'm moving the audio all over to this posted folder uh, so that I don't run the system again uh, for the same videos. And so again, at the end of the day, you'll basically have one video on YouTube, you'll have a video on Twitter, you'll have a video on Instagram, and you can really link this up to any of the platforms that are available to you inside Potato. So if you thought this video was helpful, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and definitely check out this video here about how I built an entire social media content hub using N8N. I'll see you over there.